Then the Lord said to me, Do not pray for the well-being of this people. Although they fast, I will not listen to their cry. Though they offer burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. Instead, I will destroy them with the sword, famine, and plague. Jeremiah 14, verses 11 and 12. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Legion of Michael podcast. Thank you very much to all of you out there who are in the Legion of Michael podcast, who have been paying attention, who have been listening. Thank you to everyone. And uh, if you have not taken advantage of the Legion of Michael distance learning church security program yet, you still can. There's a link in the show notes. Go ahead and uh, go to legionofmichael.com, and once you get there, you will find a clickable button, a tab that you can go to that will send you exactly right where you need to be so that you can get a hold of that information and uh, put that knowledge into your brain and put it into practice. And, of course, if you'd like to support the show, we highly encourage you to support the show. I, I encourage you to support the show by sharing this message with other people. I encourage you to support this show by letting other people know. By You, you can either leave a message, or not a message, a, a review, a review on your favorite podcast app radio listening device. Give us five stars or a thumbs up or a heart or whatever it is. You know what I mean? And if you would like to monetarily uh, support the show, you can do that uh, by following the link in the show notes. Famine is coming. Now, I, I don't believe that anyone who is a, an intellectually honest human, uh, per anyone who has been paying attention to the world, uh, will tell you that, well, that, that there's not famine coming. You know, oh, yeah, it's because of global warming and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, we've had hot summers before. Uh, we, we, we've had droughts before, uh, but we, what we have never had before is we have never had men. Well, maybe we have, maybe we have had men who deliberately and purposefully attempted to reduce the food supply. How many times have you seen in whether the news or what have you, have you seen these stories about the the fires at the food processing plants and then we got tired of that we got bored you know it happened so much that it just became white noise so we stopped paying attention to it now if you pay attention there are reports about fertilizer plants being shuttered because of fires we have the uh, diesel and and gasoline refineries all across the world being shuttered or shut down or slowing production because of fires, because of sabotage. What do we need to grow food? Well, I tell you what you don't, you don't grow food, you don't harvest and till the fields with Teslas or electric cars. You need diesel-powered tractors and farm equipment to grow food. And what have we done? Well, not only did we... Uh, create a situation, did the government create a situation, did men create a situation where the price of fuel doubled and sometimes tripled in certain cases, that now they're creating a situation where there's a shortage. Even if you have seeds, you know, these farmers are like, well, the farmers have seeds and they have the land and, and, it, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but uh, it's costing them two and three times as much as it did during previous years, to grow food. Are you willing to pay two or three times as much for bread, for meat, for eggs, for milk, for whatever? Because that's what's going to happen. Let's go back to uh, let's go back to the book of Genesis. I like the book of Genesis. Uh, I mean, like a lot of them, but uh, I like the book of Genesis. And it said in... Uh, 
chapter 41. We're going to talk about Joseph again. We talked about him before. We're talking about it again. Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, the dreams of Pharaoh are one and the same. God has revealed to Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good cows are seven years, and the seven good heads of grain are seven years. It is one and the same dream. The seven lean, ugly cows that came up afterward are seven years, and so are the seven worthless heads of grain scorched by the east wind. They are seven years of famine. Now, during a previous episode, we talked about Joseph and how uh, after Joseph predicted, well, he actually interpreted Pharaoh's dream. He predicted the future uh, because God told him what to say. Uh, He wasn't doing it himself. Joseph was acting with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was acting through Joseph. And remember, Joseph had to suffer Joseph was thrown in he was he was sold as a slave by his his brothers which is horrible and then he went into Egypt and he was doing all right and then uh, the uh, Potiphar it was a Potiphar's wife lied got him thrown into prison he suffered in prison but God had a plan for Joseph he had, he had a very important plan he wanted Joseph to be in Egypt he needed Joseph to be in Egypt because he needed to put him in place to create a situation where he could save his own people. You see, if Joseph would not have been in Egypt, if you you say, well, take Joseph out of the equation. The Pharaoh was having these dreams. God was giving him hints. He was giving him hints and clues. He wasn't getting it. And he had all of his soothsayers and magicians and so forth, and they came to him, and uh, nobody could tell him what it meant. But Joseph did. You see, Joseph saw the writing on the wall, another biblical reference. Joseph, through the Holy Spirit, was able to interpret the Pharaoh's dream. And then the Holy Spirit went into the heart of Pharaoh and said, hey, this guy Joseph, is he's like Ferris Bueller. He's a righteous dude. So what did Pharaoh do? He gave him his ring. He gave him his signet ring. And he's like, Of all men in Egypt, you are second only to me. Go out and do what you need to do. And so during the years of feast, during the good years, Joseph stored up the food all throughout the land of Egypt, not just in one place. And he kept growing and storing, and he was a good steward of what God had provided him. And because Joseph was a good steward, and because he did what he was supposed to do, and because God put that in him, he gave him that, that knowledge, that ability. The Holy Spirit was working through Joseph. And when the famine hit, and Joseph's family was out there starving, they were out there starving. His, uh, his brothers, his, his vile, evil brothers, except for Benjamin, Remember that, for, except for Benjamin. His brothers, who had sold him into slavery and lied to their father and said, yeah, he got eaten by wolves or what have you, they ended up going to going to Egypt. And what do we know? You know, The story is, what we know is that Joseph sent for his family. He had the entire family come to Egypt because there was food there. He saved his entire family. And he saved most of the nation of Israel, the 12 tribes. He saved them. We talk about, you know, we talked previously about Joseph and about his ability and his knowledge and his desire to to be a good steward and to store up the food and to prepare. But one of the most important things about the entire story of Joseph and the Pharaoh and so forth is Joseph's clarity of mind. Joseph was a faithful man, even in prison, even when uh, he, he was down and out and when, when life was not looking good, you know, when life had kind of kicked him in the gonads, he was still a faithful child of God. And God gave him clarity of mind. He sent the Holy Spirit to Joseph and gave him that vision. He told him what to say. Right now, in our world, 
you may be that Joseph in your community. You may be that Joseph in your church family or in your immediate nuclear family. You may be that one that has clarity of mind. You need to think about that. If it were not for Joseph's ability to see the future, to clear all the clutter and nonsense out of his mind and to actually see what was happening and what was coming. It's not easy, I know. Sometimes you see what's coming and you tell people what's coming and you warn them. You say, this is coming. And they're like, oh, we, we, we don't want to believe you. We don't want to believe you. Because if we believe you, that means that it's going to be hard for us and we're going to have to work hard Uh, So we don't want to believe you. There will be famine. Now, in the very beginning, I read a verse from the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah, one of the many prophets that God sent to his children to try and get them to change their ways. And what continuously happened throughout the book of the Old Testament, right? Jeremiah, Elijah, Elisha, uh, Isaiah, and so on and so forth. God sent prophets to his people because they were screwing up. They had turned their backs away from him. They had worshipped foreign gods. They had worshipped the works of their own hands, the creations of their own hands. So instead of looking to him, God their father, as their leader, and said, what did they do? What did they do? They did what we're doing today. They did what modern men do. We look at the creations of our own hands and we worship those creations. We look to men and we worship those men. We ignore our God. We ignore our creator. We ignore our heavenly father. And instead we worship men and we worship the creation of our own hands. And what did God have to continuously do? Like a father, he had to punish his children because his children were not behaving. Then the Lord said to me, do not pray for the well-being of this people. Although they fast, I will not listen to their cry. Though they offer burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. Instead, I will destroy them with the sword, famine, and plague. There's famine coming to this world. There is a famine coming to this world, and it has been orchestrated. Evil men, not those of God, minions of Satan, those who worship the work of their own hands, those who worship men, and I'll say it for the record, those who worship Satan, whether they say they worship Satan or not, their actions display otherwise. Those who worship the works of their own hands, those who worship other men, they're so impressed by themselves. They've decided that there's too many people on this planet and they're going to set about a way to eliminate, well, a good percentage of them. And they have created a situation where people across the world are going to starve to death. And it's been done on purpose. It has been done deliberately. Now, you might say that it was done at the behest of Satan, and it probably was. So what can we do, and what should we do? Well, as children of God, you need to, A, number one, recognize this. God sent the Holy Spirit into Jacob's heart, and I'm sorry, Joseph's heart, and he gave him clarity. He gave him clarity. He said, this is what's going to happen. I need you to prepare. You need to say to your family, your church community, this is what's going to happen, and you need to prepare. Now, within this this show, in this podcast, this, this mini radio episode, there's another link, and it is a link to a show that was produced and put together by a good friend of mine, and he interviews a gentleman, a gentleman named Michael Yon. And Michael uh, is a war correspondent, He's a, and he was a former Green Beret. And he's been all over the world, literally all over the world. And he's had boots on the ground, and he sees what is happening in Europe. And he has, sees, he has seen and is seeing what is happening uh, in Asia 
and in South and Central America, and of course in the United States. I want you to listen to that. Listen to this, listen to that, and prepare. There will be famine in this world. I said, I don't know, two years ago, when when I heard uh, about people wasting food, when, when I heard when people bowed down and they worshipped a foreign god, when they worshipped man, instead when, they, when we as a nation allowed men to lock us out of our churches to, and rather than fight back and say, no, not your will, but God's will be done, we don't worship men. We worship God our Father first. And if you as a man as a man who was supposed to be, you know, what did Paul say in the New Testament? Said that our leaders, our political leaders, are supposed to be God's representatives here on earth. They're supposed to set the example. That is what we expect from them, and that is what we should demand from them. Instead, what do we see? We see evil men and evil women who've done horrible things to us as a nation. And instead of fighting back against it, we bowed down, we put on our masks, we silenced ourselves, and we're, we turned our backs on our God. We've turned our backs on God. And there is going to be a punishment. And it's just the way it's going to be. Now you can prepare your family. You can prepare your community. You can get out there and you can do the right thing. It's up to you, though. There will be famine in this world, and you have to decide. What are you going to do? Are you going to put all of your faith in the minions of Satan? Are you going to put your faith in evil men and evil women? Or are you going to put your faith in God? Are you going to strengthen your community, or are you going to bow down and worship man? Worship the, the works of man. It's up to you. As for me and my family, we shall follow the Lord. Let's say the warrior's prayer together. Lord, I come before you seeking the strength and the skill to overcome my enemies. Grant me, I pray, the wisdom to recognize evil, the courage to confront it, and the strength to to destroy it. In Jesus' name I pray this. Amen.